Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to Chen Chen Tai Liberty and uh, Bay Room today. It is our honor to host uh, tonight's event together with CGCC. This space used to be the office building of the Chase Bank. Now. We have changed it into a high-end event space in New York. I look forward to holding everyone of our of your stories tonight, and I hope everyone have a wonderful night and welcome to Bayloom again. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. Good evening. The China General Chamber of Commerce is honored to be proud co-host of this evening's event. As you all know, China and the U.S. are each other's most important trading partners. As a mutually beneficial economic relationship has become the bedrock of a cooperation between the world's two largest economies. Unfortunately, it appears the recent tariff dispute has barely begun but already has caused significantly negative impacts across sectors in both countries, world markets, and even at the people-to-people -people relationship. Difference in ideology, culture, and economic growth should not pose a threat to a peaceful and a prosperous relationship. In fact, the opportunities for the U.S. and China, the world's two largest economies, are greater than ever before in history. We should embrace, engage, expand areas of cooperation at every level, creating win-win situations and mutually beneficial opportunities for our people and for future generations. Well, there are challenges to finding a near-term resolution to certain issues. I still believe a compromise can be achieved through dialogue and negotiation. H.G. has taught us there are simply no winners in a trade war. Both nations can innovate and benefit far more through increased trade and cooperation. By exchanging ideas, goods, and services in an interdependent world, China's market has gradually opened to U.S. products and services in virtually every industry. U.S. companies have grown significantly in China and they continue to benefit from China's growth and the growing middle class and expanding consumer and services markets. Five years ago, um, we embarked on a journey to make a different type of film about the U.S.-China relationship. So by looking through the lenses of ordinary Americans and ordinary Chinese who are seeking to bridge the physical and metaphysical distance that divides us, this film, I think, makes a major down payment on shattering the myths that Americans have about China and China has about America. You worry so much about the other guy wiping you out that you can have a war breaking out over nothing but mutual fear. Diplomacy is like a game of billiards. Somebody thinks they're going to hit the ball and make it go into a pocket across the table. What it does instead is hit a lot of other balls along the way. We were so curious about all things China, and he was so curious about all things America. He was on the quiet side. They all generally are. I want to make this house a window of Chinese culture. I think that I can help you do that. I didn't know anything about China. And I would say that they're my friends. I wouldn't just call them my coworkers because when I walk through the plant, I'm always saying, y'all. I love celebrating a culture that's 4,000 years old. One, two, three, see ya! It's kind of ironic that I had to come to China. And now I'm a coach, and I love it. 
China is rapidly transforming from the world's largest factory to the world's largest market. This is the exact wrong time to be picking a trade war with China. We are different people, we're proud people, in so many ways inextricably connected, and yet are also deeply suspicious of each other. It's like the world's worst buddy road trip comedy. And the question is, how do we get past that suspicion? How do we get to a point where we acknowledge all the things that we have in common?